Hi everyone and welcome to my channel and to this short video where I'm going to share with you the beauty of using thumbnails to make decisions about your painting. Now it's not something that I do all the time but with this particular image it has given me some invaluable information before I start to paint the real thing. So I hope that you find this helpful and that you enjoy the video. If you do then please do subscribe to me here on YouTube and there will be a full-length tutorial like there are already many full-length tutorials over on my Patreon channel if you want to follow along in real time. All of the last month I have been painting snow scenes and I've made a few tutorials already over on my Patreon. These are a couple that I've been working on. But you can see with these two, they're really vibrant and filled with colour because I'm often drawn to photo reference that has sunlight in it. I really enjoy pushing colour choices further and making even more of the light and shade that I can see in the photo reference. But what about a snow scene where you've got an entirely different mood and atmosphere? Coming from Ireland, I'm quite familiar with the more grey and bleak looking snow scene like in my photo reference for this painting. I really enjoy the composition of this photo reference, but you can see when I compare it with a grayscale version just beside it, there's not a big difference here. There's very little colour in the photo reference. And that's not usually the type of reference that I would choose to paint. But I was intrigued to see if I could create some kind of bleak atmosphere, but I didn't know whether or not to inject more colour into it or to go with the more monochrome feel that we get from the photo reference. So before starting my bigger painting with so many unresolved ideas and questions, I decided why not produce some thumbnails and try out some colour palettes first. I don't always do that with my work. I'm usually pretty clear on what colours I would like to use and I come up with my layouts quite often using Photoshop. But when I've got lots of ideas on different directions to go with colour, I find that thumbnails are the way. So I'm going to talk you through creating each of these thumbnails and I'll talk lots about my colour decisions for each one as we go. Then at the end, hopefully I'll be able to share the idea that I've settled upon for the final painting. I'd also love to hear your thoughts if you've got a favourite from these thumbnails. So I'll show you now how I created them. So here are the four little palettes of colour that I chose and here are my tiny little thumbnails at four by three inches. Now I needed to give myself a quick line drawing on each one and in retrospect I shouldn't have used a warm coloured paper but it was a scrap of pastel mat that I had sitting and thought I would make use of it. So the first colour that I'm testing is the mostly monochrome palette. This one seems like it will be more in keeping with the photo reference. And so I'm starting with the black new pastel stick. And for me, it's hard to stick with monochrome because I don't actually have many monochrome greys. Almost everything that I have has a, a tint to it, some hint of colour in it. So I used a, a dark grey and a couple of lighter greys as close to monochrome as possible. And really I don't use many monochrome greys in my work. I use black and white to a certain extent, but the other grey colours I tend to try and always push the colours that I can see, so taking them more in a direction of warm or cool, for example. So sticking to just monochrome, which I do with charcoal, for example, but I find I'm not that inspired to do it in pastel just because of all the other colours that you've got. So here at the end of each little demo, I'll share the colour list with you. Most of my pastels here are unison. And if you see a different brand name, then you know that's a different pastel, but just assume that they're unisons otherwise. So the next one that I tried was the sepia tone one. Now, despite the fact that it's a snow scene, 
There are some older paintings that I think of that have this kind of yellow tint to everything, even when it's snow. So I wanted to try and go more in the brown direction. So warm everything up, but use the same values. So I love to bring in lots of complementary colors in my work. And number four, you will see, combines a few of these. But for each of these, I really tried to limit myself to just one group of colors and not overcomplicate. And my aim here is actually to find a very subtle color palette for this piece because there's not a huge range of colors in the photo reference. And I do want to capture some of that mood. And I think sometimes with this kind of snow scene, perhaps a slightly more muted or subtle palette can be really good. I'm thinking of, for example, Pieter Bruegel's Hunters in the Snow. This painting is quite muted. Um, he's used very muted colours for the snow. However, there are a lot of man-made objects also within the scene, like the buildings and the people in the foreground, so you get some splashes of colour. Whereas in this photo reference, the dog is also very dark in colour. And there's really nothing there that adds a little bit of colour just to lift the painting. So at this stage, I'm thinking that going entirely in the monochrome direction will result in something that's probably closer to the photo reference, but not a very bright or interesting painting. So the sepia tone one, I do like this. Somehow it still gives a hint of the snow scene and the heaviness, the, the darkness of the day, despite everything being so bright. But as one of my patrons pointed out, it also has a little hint of autumn about it, which I agree, there is just too much warmth in this one to be considered cold and snowy. But you'll see some of these colours feature in the final one as well. And here again is the colour list. Mostly unisons again, with this time a few Terry Ludwigs. So we're on to blue-violet. This was where my mind first went to. I love working with blue violets, as you saw in my previous snow paintings, but these are very different because we've got sunlight in them, and that really changes the reflective quality of all of that white snow. In my photo reference here, it's very much a white sky that's filled with snow waiting to fall. So I've got to use a lot of imagination if I'm going to completely inject a new color that I can't actually see in the photo reference. So here I'm working with tonal value, having already done the grayscale version and the sepia tone version, I'm getting quite familiar now with the tonal values that I need right across the scene. So working all with blue violets this time, and in my mind, this makes a lot of sense because snow is cold. But I was also thinking that it would result in a very different feel, a very different scene than we get in the photo reference. And I still wasn't totally sure that I wanted to go too far away from the photo reference. So you can see here the problem with using a warm toned paper for these little thumbnails. I end up with a lot of that warm colour shining through, which is lovely, I really like it. But when I look at my thumbnails from a distance, I don't really see those warm touches shining through. And it gives me more an idea of what I was hoping to get from these thumbnails. And that was just an overall view of the colour palette. But I do really like the effect of using a cooler colored palette with a warm colored paper underneath. So here again is my color list and I really do like this one. I think all of them had qualities that I really liked. 
And in the final one now, I'm experimenting more in a way that comes naturally, using complementary colors. So this is usually my go-to method with everything. Throw some complementary colors at it and it will work. So in this one, I'm starting off the same way. I'm using not the black, but the, the dark Terry Ludwig as my darkest value. And then I'm coming in again with the same blue violets, the darker colors. Only this time, I will also lift some of the brighter highlights using the yellow tones. So I'm bringing in yellow and blue violet complementaries. Lots of light lemon yellow and lots of light lilac purples and blues. So that is my instinctual direction to go using complementary colors. But throughout painting all four of these, I found little elements that I liked in them all. And I think what I plan to do is to take little elements from all four and inject them into the final painting. So I do like how all four of them are quite subtle. None of them are particularly vibrant. However, they all have their own look and mood. And with this one now, I'm starting to bring in some of those more muted um, sepia tones that I used in number two. And just mixing that in around the cooler blue violets. So I would love to hear your thoughts on which direction you would like to see me go with this painting. The video will come out before I start the painting, so I may take some of your comments into consideration before I start. I've changed my mind on this painting so many times. At first I was really going to stick with the more monochrome look and really go for the mood that's in the photo. But I couldn't resist the temptation to experiment a bit more with colour. And in the end, I think these thumbnails have proved to me that I have a need to inject some colour into this reference. What it has really shown me, though, is that I want to be really subtle with my colour choices. And so, even though I really like numbers three and four here with a bit more colour in them, I think my plan now is to bring in some of those monochrome grey colours as well and just keep the vibrance of this one under control. So normally I'm pushing the vibrance, normally I'm trying to exaggerate colours and really push things in a slightly more vibrant direction. But I think what I want to do for this one now is to do quite the opposite, try to rein in those vibrant colours and perhaps use a, a wider variety of tonal values than I have done in these little thumbnails. So each one is a very limited palette. And for me, the thumbnails are always really interesting to see just how much of a scene you can create, how much of a mood you can create with quite a small number of colours. So here are all four of them together now. It's good to be able to compare all of them side by side and all four of my color palettes looking extremely dirty. So yeah, which one do you like? Or do you, similar to me, like a little mixture of all of them? I learned a lot from doing this, and I've also got a really good big palette of colors here sitting to work with, so I think I'm gonna combine all of these thumbnails together in a way. But yeah, a very interesting experiment and I'd love to hear what direction you would go, so do leave me a comment below. So I hope that you found this experiment helpful. I certainly did and it has shown me, I think, a clearer path ahead with my final painting. In the end, I don't think I've really decided to go with any one of these in particular. It's more 
that there are certain elements that I like from all of them. I think I want to incorporate some of the complementary lilac and yellow idea, but I think it would be helpful to bring some of the more monochrome greys in as well, just to try and keep some of that very uh, bleak winter feel. But then there are little compositional elements that I like from all of them, and that's really going to help me a lot while I'm painting the final thing. And of course I'll share the final painting with you guys here on YouTube. I'll release a time lapse of that very soon. But then if you would like to follow along with the real-time tutorial series, this will come out on my Patreon channel. So thanks very much to everyone who has already subscribed to me here on YouTube and to all my followers on Patreon. And until next time, happy pastling.